So I thought to get back, yeah, that's in focus. To get back into the swing of things, I would, for at least the beginning, I will not just do videos weekly, but daily and see how that goes for as long as I can. I want to see if I can get something that will at least pass for lunch for at least this much amount of money. These are really good. So today I thought it'd be nice if I started to create a little dialogue with you guys and start off things with a Q&A video. So first question is from Stan Earls. Do you prefer digital or film photography? I like to think that I have a good understanding of the pros and cons of both medium, but I don't have a clear favorite. But I firmly believe that it's very valuable that you educate yourself on film because it really forces you under all those constraints that you have when working with film. It just forces you to be creative and ultimately learn how to use a camera manually. Being under the limitation of having a set number of shots that you can take and not delete the bad ones of, it forces you to be good or try to learn to be good and you think about the shot more. Danielle asks, what's the biggest thing uni has taught you so far? I'm gonna answer this generally and not like specific to a film course at university, but I definitely learned how to be a little bit more independent. I was fairly independent before I came to university and I think I learned the thing that I'm better now. It must be Alex from the YouTube channel. It must be Alex asked me, do you think film will last much longer due to the Due to digital, will there always be a place slash demand for it? I think so, for quite a while. Looking at the very surface of the benefits that digital brings to the table in terms of filmmaking, it, you would think that it's been a fully switched digital already, but it hasn't. There have been a load of modern films that you probably thought were shot on digital that were actually shot on film for a number of reasons. Some of those reasons are that some of the most talented cinematographers out there were trained on film and want to support that and don't want to switch to something new. Also, some filmmakers choose to shoot on film because they want their crew to know that if they messed up, they've, they've messed up. So ultimately, they will try harder. It's like the photography thing. You, you intuitively just try harder when you know there's there's money in film at risk here. Christopher Nolan has been quite passionate when it comes to trying to make sure film still has a place in the industry. He shoots all of his big feature length films on film and it, that's just one director in the many. Edgar Wright shoots a lot of stuff on film. Scott Pilgrim was shot on film. One film that you think would be shot on digital due to the amount of special effects. That was film. Also the entirety of Breaking Bad was shot on film. But yeah, film has a good person. It must be Alex Trace again with another question. How do you learn skills photography? How do you learn skills photography and any resources to help each other is the same stuff. There's a few YouTube channels that I follow to kind of learn photography, I guess. There's Digital Rev, Verono's Photos and um, The Art of Photography. They're good, but the most important thing is the second that you learn something from one of those videos, you should go out and go shoot and put those like things you've just learned into practice then you learn a lot more from doing that. But it's nice to have the guidance, the initial guidance from, you know, videos or a teacher, but it's always important when learning something that you go out and do it in practice. Then you learn more. Gareth Howell asks, favorite camera? ATM? I don't know my favorite ATM machine, the Zynga, but my favorite camera is this one, which I'm using, the Sony A7S. I could go on for ages why this camera is my favorite camera ever made. That's possibly a future video in itself, so I'll I'll save that one. But it's the Sony A7S. Not endorsed by Sony, but Sony, love to work with you. Pay me to talk good things about your camera. Safarunical asks, any tips for someone wanting to start their own independent filmmaking biz? Just a couple of general tips is to make your own opportunities happen. If you want to find that first film job and you're just sat there waiting for something to happen, then you should Go out, go out, organize a shoot with your friends. Just go out and shoot something yourself, put it out on YouTube. So those people who want to email someone to shoot their, I don't know, corporate video, they'll have something to watch and see and be like, hey, do you wanna do that? And also, don't be a dick because no one wants to work with a dick. I was told quite recently by a regular client of mine that they know people who are better than me. They know people with better equipment, but they choose to keep coming back to me just because I'm easy to work with. I'm never a dick. Just be nice to them. They're giving you work for something that you like to do. Thank them. Be nice to them. Do a good job. What sort of equipment do you use? Does it really matter? I think when you're getting started, don't worry about equipment too much. Just focus on learning. It's nice to start off using a camera which you can use manually, like a DSLR, because then you have the ability to 
you know, practice and learn things like aperture and ISO, and those things apply to all cameras. There's no point of owning a DSLR and then shooting it in manual ISO. Do manual stuff and be creative and that's when you learn. My friend Natalie asked, what has helped you through the stressful times at university? Do you have any methods or playlists to share? Generally when I am stressed out over doing work or whatever, my kind of go-to in terms of music is Sidney Bechet. Look him up on Spotify if you like some nice jazz to help you through those stressful, stressful times. Sidney Bechet not sponsored what the next big thing that will blow people's minds why don't you stay subscribed and you can find out kill me rob simpson asks what helps you get past a creative block just keep making things just make anything i don't believe there's such a thing as a creative block if you just keep doing stuff and keep learning keep watching things to keep you motivated and inspired and to influence you if you just keep if you find a balance of all those things that i just said you'll never experience a creative block. Katie asks, what's the most challenging part of filmmaking? I'd say the producing side of things. Like, you start off with a great idea that you're super passionate about and you really wanna get out there. But then when you start making things, you're gonna have to sacrifice like your creative ideas for constraints like money, time, finding talent to help you. The filmmaking process is like a train wreck. It starts off great and then poof, death, destruction, horrible. But do it anyway, because it's great. Not like a train wreck. <laughs> yeah, still making. My good pal John D. Barker asks, when productivity dwindles, how often do food solve the skirmish between concentration and the end result? Food is very important. But generally, if you're trying to concentrate or you need some kind of energy to keep going, try to eat something fresh. Don't go for that monster energy can. Energy drinks, never a good idea if you need to concentrate, because it gives you a great big high and then a great big low whereas stuff like fresh fruit keeps you like like at like a nice steady level of energy which is great for when you need to work it must be alex is back with a third question who are your style icons i don't really have a style i guess joseph gordon levitt i firmly believe that if i looked just a little bit more like joseph gordon levitt my quality of life would be just a lot better matt lay asks jujimon or grapes i would go with grapes but i think a younger me would probably choose the other. Delaz asks, do you regret anything about your journey through YouTube? Would you change anything if you could? I think really early on when I started working with other content creators, I would, especially the video makers that I really admired, I would kind of act like a fan in front of them. That's one thing I regret. If I could go back to my past self and give him some advice, just don't act like a fan. That's not to say not to show admiration for what they make or what they do, but just don't freak out in front of them. Not that I ever really did. I never had any major examples of that. Just treat people like people. Uh, my friend Louis asks, is the 50 mil really that nifty? You tell me, this was shot on a 50 mil 1.4. Look at that blur. So good. Was there a time that you recognized that filmmaking was not just a hobby and something that you could potentially turn into a living? Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there was. I made a video which kind of is about this idea, about me personally, how I realized that, and it's called Boy With A Movie Camera. I remember being really young and seeing on TV this documentary about the making of Jurassic Park and just being like, wow, these guys are great. I really want to be doing this, but I can't because they're naturally talented. They got so much more talent than I do. I could never do that. But then when I came across YouTube in 2008, some of the most viewed stuff on there were fairly basic film stuff. And I looked at that and thought the exact opposite. I thought, I can do that and it was because I thought that I went out and tried and then I realized it wasn't as easy as I once thought and I slowly had to learn how to use the camera how to edit and all the things that come within filmmaking and then I, I came to a realization that everything that I've learned is pretty much all the stuff that I thought I would never know filmmaking is currently at a point where it's very accessible 10 20 years ago it was incredibly hard you need a budget you need education just to know how to edit now you have free editing software with most computers pretty much all com you can edit on an iphone now there's no learning curve you can make a film all from your iphone and distribute it globally from that same iphone why aren't you making a film right now go make a film also side note it's really great when you realize you can turn your hobby into money that's that's a good thing. If you can do that in life, uh, you'll be happy. Any tips to start in university and tips specific to film as well? Don't be competitive. 
with everyone else on your course. If you have had done a lot of film work outside of university, don't introduce yourself as, hey, I've done loads of, look at this music video I did over the summer during my gap year or whatever, don't, don't do that. You would hope that most of your fellow students who are studying film to be passionate about film like you are. So these are some potential great friends that you could make, some potential great collaborators that you can work on films with. So you wanna be nice to them and not see them as competitors. Filmmaking inspirations, I have a lot. Uh, Okay, so I'm using my webcam on my MacBook because this thing just died on me out here in the wilderness. Alfred Hitchcock, um, Spike Jones, Coen Brothers are kind of like my go-to answers for who influences me in my filmmaking. But yeah, if you had any questions which I didn't answer in this video, then feel free to put them in the comments below. But yeah, but yeah, thanks for watching and bye-bye. Bye. Microphone on the floor.